let's have a look at a physics olympiad from bulgaria a lot of you guys will know that this is where i'm from so let's have a browse question one is the tricky rotational physics one involving the moment of inertia and the first part of it involves a horizontal strike and the second one a strike at a height h we also have some tricky thermodynamics parallel plate capacitors and the last question even involves the lorentz transformations to derive the velocity addition formula which is something that i've done for the first time at university applying this to this really interesting experiment with water let's solve the very first one let's translate this question we have a billiard ball that experiences an initial force and afterwards it is moving with an initial speed v naught the coefficient of friction of this ball is just k and its mass is m at t is equal to t naught the ball starts rolling without slipping we need to find this time at which the ball starts rolling without slipping and the speed at that precise time before we even delve deeper into the question we need to understand what does it mean to be rolling without slipping well if a time interval passes and this point has moved to a new position let's say that it's covered some angle delta theta during this time the ball would have also traveled horizontally some distance delta x now the condition for rolling without slipping is that the horizontal distance delta x will have to be equal to the arc length that was been that this point here has traveled so let's just call that s well delta x is just going to be given by speed times time so that's just going to be equal to v times delta t and due to the definition of an angle s will just be equal to r times that angle delta theta we get that the linear speed v will then be equal to r delta theta divided by delta t and in the limit that delta t is really small it tends towards zero then the linear speed will be equal to r d theta by dt and we call this the angular speed so we can say that v is equal to r omega and this is the equation that is commonly taught but it only really applies to rolling without slipping let's think what is actually happening in our problem so after the ball is initially hit it acquires a speed v naught and, and then it will start decelerating due to the frictional force which is acting along here what will the deceleration of the center of mass of this ball actually be well let's apply newton's second law so we know that the sum of all forces and in this case we assume there's only one force in the horizontal direction which is the force due to friction will be equal to k the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal reaction in this case so the mass of the ball is capital m this will be kmg because this is the only force that is acting we can set that equal to mass times acceleration oops let's use capital m across here to stay consistent which will be equal to k m g and we can find the acceleration of the center of mass of that ball to be equal to k g so what i'm going to say is i'm going to use the fact that the final speed let's call that v will be equal to that initial speed which is v naught then we're going to take away the acceleration multiplied by the time so in other words what we're going to get is that the speed at a time t will be equal to v naught take away kg multiplied by t my second step will be to look at the angular velocity of this ball this force of friction is acting at a distance which is r naught from the center of the ball and therefore will be causing a moment or if you're watching this from the usa it will be causing a torque so we can use newton's second law for rotation by saying that the frictional force multiplied by its distance to the axis of rotation will be equal to the moment of inertia and then we're going to multiply this by the angular acceleration which i'm just going to call alpha which is the symbol that is typically used but 
alpha in this case is just the time derivative of the angular velocity. Well, the frictional force is just going to be equal to kmg, then we're gonna multiply this by r naught, and then we're given the moment of inertia with respect to this axis, which is just going to be two over five multiplied by m, multiplied by r naught squared, and then multiplied by the angular acceleration, which is alpha. Okay, we can do some cancellations. So the mass can go, and we can also get rid of one factor of r naught. And we can rearrange directly for our angular acceleration alpha, which will then just be equal to kg, and then we can bring the factor of five, then divide by two, and then we also have a factor of r naught. Now that we have the angular acceleration, we can use the laws of motion in the angular world and exactly the same as in the translation world, the angular speed will be equal to the angular acceleration multiplied by the time that's elapsed. Okay, well, alpha the angular acceleration is just equal to 5kg divided by 2r0 multiplied by the time that it has elapsed. Okay, so we have our angular speed and now we are ready to use the big condition of this problem that if this ball is rolling without slipping, the linear speed has to be equal to r multiplied by omega. Applying this equation, our v is going to equal to v naught minus kg multiplied by t. That's going to be equal to the radius, which in the case of the ball is just equal to r naught times the angular speed, which is given by 5 kg t divided by 2 times r naught. We can get rid of this factor of r naught. I'm going to bring all the factors of t to one side. What we're going to get is that v naught will be equal to 5 kg t divided by 2 plus kg t. So this here will be equal to 7 over 2 kg t. And the time at which the ball starts rolling without slipping will then just be equal to 2 times v naught over 7 kg. But remember, the question is asking us to find this time, which we have, while well, the question calls that tau naught, and the speed of the ball at this time. So all we need to do is take this expression and then substitute this back in here. And what we're going to find is that the speed will be equal to v naught take away kg times. Now the time was 2 times v naught over 7 kg. This can go, so that's going to be v naught take away 2 over 7 v naught, and this is equal to 5 over 7 v naught. So at a speed which is exactly equal to 5 over 7 of the initial speed, this ball here will start rolling without slipping. So in our example, we actually proved that the linear speed is equal to the speed due to the angular rotation. What does that mean? Well, if I have any rolling ball, if I pick at that Pick this contact point here, let's call that P. Now, this point here will have to be moving this way because the center of mass is going this way. Let's call that V center of mass. So what we've shown is that the velocity due to a center of mass has to be equal to the velocity due to the rotation of the ball. Now, if the ball is rolling this way, then all the points are going to be moving in this direction. So this means, means that this point here will have a second speed, which will have to be perfectly equal and in the opposite direction. Let's make this even a little bit longer so that they match sizes like this. I'm going to call this, I don't know, V alpha, which will be equal to R omega. Because they're equal and opposite, this point P 
pee here will actually have a momentary, um, instantaneous speed of zero. So this means that if you're riding your bike and the wheel is rolling without slipping, the contact point momentarily grips and has an instantaneous speed of zero. If you're driving down a motorway, Every time the wheel spins, this contact point for a very brief moment has an instantaneous speed of zero and then the rest of the wheel starts turning around it. These rotational physics problems are amazing and you should have a look at yet another one and this one is from the International Physics Olympiad and it's only one mark and this video is right over here.